New data shows drug overdoses are up nationwide. In Arizona, opioid-related deaths went from less than 1,000 back in 2017 to 2,000 deaths last year. The CDC says from March of 2021 to March of 2022, more than 109,000 people died from an overdose, and that is a 44% jump year to year. Most of those overdoses are blamed on synthetic opioids like fentanyl. Access to pills is perhaps easier than ever thanks to social media. A Valley mom who lost her 14-year-old son to fentanyl, which she says he bought off an app, says social media companies still aren't doing enough to stop dealers from exploiting their platforms. Shortly after Alexander Neville's family took this video, one single pill took his life. I went to wake him up for an orthodontist appointment. And that's when I found him. He was looked like he had just fallen asleep on his beanbag chair, except for that he was blue and he wasn't breathing and he was cold. You knew right away. Oh yeah, I knew right away. Yeah. The painkiller Alex bought off an app and took before bed had a deadly dose of fentanyl. He was barely 14. He had just had a birthday. She shares the photos of her young son with freckles and braces to send a message to other parents. Alex loved Legos and trips with the scouts but he'd also developed a curiosity about drugs. He started experimenting with pills, but he came to you a couple days before he, he died he and said, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Of course, we're like, okay, we're going to get you help. It's going to be okay. We did not understand the urgency of what we were up against. It's been pretty rough, grief, depression, all that, all that stuff. Alex's younger sister, Eden, joined her parents, turning their grief into a campaign to inform parents and lobby lawmakers to pressure social media companies to crack down on drug sales. Well, most of these people, they were just kids. It's so not fair that people are dying this way. Narcotics detectives do a lot of Snapchat surveillance. In Maricopa County, they've seized millions in cash, plus assault weapons and countless pills, all from Snapchat drug cases. So if I tried with your help here in the East Valley to order something from my Snapchat account, how, how quickly or how easily would that be? It's super easy. It's, it's just like ordering a pizza. It's so it's like really easy. The DEA just released this updated emoji code this summer designed to help parents decipher the evolving meanings of different emojis in the online drug world. Oxycodone can be represented by one of these from flames to honey to a gas tank and parents checking their kids' messages or contacts should always look for the electric plug, which means they're talking to a dealer. Most people who aren't up with the times, you know, <laughs> uh, don't, don't know what any of them mean. The advice is to monitor social media interactions, checking contacts and emojis, while avoiding knee-jerk reactions like seizing a child's phone. All that's going to do is create divide in the household and, and unnecessary stress. Snapchat now uses AI and they've hired former officers to detect dealers. Still, critics point out Snapchat users can just lie to get around age restrictions and privacy settings and dealers can misspell the names of drugs to try to avoid detection. Snapchat officials say they believe the measures they're taking are making Snapchat an increasingly hostile environment for drug dealers. Advocates for change say social media companies are moving too slowly. You know, everybody wants the biggest market share. And at what cost, though? Is it really worth our kids' lives? I don't think so. Her family formed the Alexander Neville Foundation to spread awareness and help other families. You could find a link to that and also a detailed list of those emoji codes from the DEA posted on azfamily.com right now.